Soon night will fall over the great house at Collinwood, and Jeb Hawks will be stalked again by the formless shadow that has been haunting him. Terrified for her husband's safety, Carolyn has responded to a telephone call from a man named Bruno, who has told her he knows a way of saving Jeb. Come in. You got here quickly. That's good. Still gets dark so early. The moon will be out soon. How's your husband? You know as well as I do. Where is this person? Patience, my dear. I have none. And I know you well enough to know you do nothing without some payment. Whatever it is, I agree to it. Let me talk with whoever can save Jeff. Is it Nicholas? Oh. Nicholas would do nothing. No, oh, this is someone else. He's in this room. Is that how you had to keep whoever it is here? Well, it seemed wisest. He didn't want to stay. You can go in now. I won't lock the door this time. Chris! Carolyn, get out! will have no reason to live now. longer, my dear. Not much longer. What are you doing here? I saw Carolyn come into this house. Where is she? Oh, you've got to be mistaken. doing in that room? What's going on here? I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave, Mr. Collins. I have no intention of leaving without Carolyn. This door is locked. And it's going to stay locked. Now get out! before this one comes to. Now listen, you keep an eye on him while I go try to get Julia Hoffman. this telephone. What happened? 
I don't know. But I'm going to get you out of here right away. Come on. Come on. I think you'd better start explaining a few Please, things. Please, Uncle Roger. Not now. Carolyn, I know you're upset. That man must have been a maniac. But he's also supposed to be a friend of your husband's, isn't he? I, I, I don't know. I'm so confused by everything at this point. Well, I think I'd better have a talk with Jeb. No! No, don't do that. I don't want Jeb or Mother to know what happened tonight. Well, in heaven's name, why not? Uncle Roger, I can't tell you that now. Carolyn, this man is dangerous. The police should be notified. I don't want the police brought in on this. Promise me you won't call them. I don't understand your attitude at all. He could have killed you tonight. And what did he do to Chris Jennings? Uncle Roger, promise me you won't tell anyone about tonight. At least not tonight. <laughs> If anyone talks with Jeb, I will. Well, I suggest you do it as soon as possible. I will. Reprieve is only temporary, Carolyn. Only temporary. Are you as concerned as you look? Hello, Roger. I asked you a question. Concerned about what? About Carolyn and her marriage to that strange man. Oh, Roger, we've been through all this. Yes. And when we first discussed it, you pretended that you would accept it. But I know that you're deeply troubled by it as I am. You? Yes, me. You and I have made such mistakes in our own lives. And I think we both prayed that it would be different for our children. But we didn't succeed in making it better for them, did we? Elizabeth, it can't be too late. Oh, Roger, I don't know what to do anymore. Well, we could begin by looking more into Jeb's background. And then what? Whatever we found out, find out won't do anyone any good. Carolyn won't change her mind about him. And will probably even drive her further away from me than she is already. Do you honestly think that he's in love with her? Roger, that isn't the problem. The point is that Carolyn is convinced that she's in love with him, despite his strange behavior lately. Strange behavior? What are you talking about? Well, I can't explain it to you. I can only tell you that something or someone is frightening him. 
Carolyn is being very protective of him and refuses to discuss it with me. I assume the two of you are talking about me. Yes, as a matter of fact, we are. Well, I wish both of you would stop being so concerned about Jeb and me. Whatever problems we have, we can work out together. Then you are having problems. I don't wish to discuss it, Uncle Roger. Mother, have you seen Jeb tonight? He's nowhere upstairs. No, I talked to him earlier. He said he was going to the carriage house. Thank you. You're not going there at this hour. I have to talk to him. Well, why not wait for him here? It's late. You should rest. You've been through enough. Enough what, Roger? Well, I mean, she's been through enough emotional strain these past few days. It's late, and she should get some rest. I'll be back in a little while. Why doesn't she confide in one of us? Why? I wish I knew, Roger. you, Carolyn? I'm sorry. You should be. Where are you going? I'm on my way to see Jeb. And I intend to tell him about the incident at your house tonight. I'm sure you'll have some explaining to do when he sees you. But he isn't going to see me. And you're not going to see him. What do you mean? What are you going to do? All right, I'll tell you. Nicholas and I warned Jeb that we'd get even with him. You and Nicholas work together. That's right. And it's been decided that the best way of getting even with Jeb is through you. Really? Yes. Without you, Jeb will have no reason to live. I don't understand. And you never will because I'm going to kill you. You're in insane. Don't like doing it, Carolyn. But it must be done. Jeb must be punished. Stop it, Bruno! Stop it! Everything's going to be all right. Try to get you a doctor. No. Too late. But an animal. Animal? What kind of animal? Not, not, not 
really in a hell? Really? Really? must be that same animal I saw some time ago, according to what Carolyn says. It's not an ordinary animal. It wears clothes and walks like a man. Terrifying. Well, the police have been notified. They're searching the grounds immediately. How is Carolyn? Well, I took her upstairs and put her to bed and had Julia give her a sedative. I think you ought to go to bed yourself and get some rest. You look very tired. I am. But I... Uh... There's something I must do before I go to bed. What? Oh, just something that I promised Barnabas I would do. Good night, Liz. Good night, Roger. I just saw him die. Bruno! Bruno! You're still as beautiful as ever. I remember the day that you sat for this portrait, listening to the music I had composed for you. The music that will keep the memory of you alive forever. What are you doing here? My dear Elizabeth. You always did have the knack for showing up unexpectedly. Why have you come back? I belong here. You're the only one that thinks so. Wrong. She thought so. Quentin is returning soon. He'll never let you stay here. I understand he's coming back married. That's right. Won't he be in for a surprise? What do you mean? Do you think that she'll let another woman come into this house? She won't. You know that as well as I do. Why does everyone speak of her as if she was still alive? Frightening. Nothing was ever frightening about her. You all envied her because she was the most intelligent and most beautiful creature that ever graced this earth. I think you'd better leave now. Fortunately for you, I'm in no mood to argue with you. I'll be seeing you around. My dear Elizabeth. Barnabas wasn't imagining things. People like ourselves are living a completely different existence. Here in this room. I must find Barnabas and tell him. Was that Bruno, the terrible tempered boy wonder I saw just now? Yes, he's come back. Back to compose more of his morbid music and bore us with his tiresome memories of her. <laughs> well, it'll be worth seeing the look on Quentin's face when he finds out, won't it? <laughs> <laughs>